Okay, also let me just show you quickly how I'm holding this saw. A lot of people hold a Dazuki saw way down here on the handle. I would say that's where you want to hold it when you want power and speed, but a little bit less accurate in my view. I like to put my index finger over the front of the handle like that. It's kind of like a hook and that helps me draw the saw back and because my hand is so much closer to the cutting action, I feel like I have more control. Okay, it's kind of like holding a baseball bat, choking, choking up on the bat, you got more control but less power. Holding it down here, you're going to hit the ball further, but you're probably more likely to miss. All right, so let's cut a little further, and we're, we're heading right down that line, just shy of hitting the shoulder line. I'm just taking a look at the back as well to see how I'm doing back there. Now, I can look at here, look at the front here, and I can just see a trace of my pencil line there. At the top, I think I've removed a bit of the line in the very corner there. Okay, but by looking close at the front, the top, and the back, I can see where my errors are. To be honest, um, cutting the tailboard is a little less nerve-wracking because you can make some mistakes here and still make a beautiful joint. However, when the tails are done, we trace those onto the pin board and you have to cut right on the second board or you're going to have gaps everywhere. Okay, so you can relax and you can sort of practice a little. In other words, if I cut a little bit off the line, I might not have to fix that at all with my chisels later. I might be able to leave it. The question is, did you follow the line here and at the back in the same way? And if the answer is yes, then you might not need to correct anything at all. Okay, so there's my first cut. Be very careful to end before you get to the shoulder or at the shoulder, but if you go past, there's no way to correct that little hole there other than to fill it. Also check the back that you don't go past the shoulder on the inside either. So it really doesn't take a lot of glue. Just get a little bit on the stick. One little swipe on each surface like that. Get a little bit more. You know, one thing people tell me when they come here for seminars and stuff is every time they see me glue something up, they can't believe how little glue I use. They're used to slathering it everywhere, but then, of course, it causes lots of problems. All right, let's put this thing together. So we can just start it with our fingers. And then start tapping with the mallet. And you can also put a block of wood here and hit that with a hammer, like even like this, one tail at a time. Make sure you don't bring one down fully ahead of the others, because if you turn a lot, you're putting a lot of strain on the pins and you could break them. Okay, so that's a little messy. So wipe off what you can. They say all these types of uh, wood glue are pretty much like school glue. They're, they don't, they're non-toxic, so that's why I don't mind using my fingers once in a while. All right, so we'll put this on like this now. Now it's gonna be hard for me to hold it like this vertically, so I'm gonna lay it down. The joinery is not quite close, but the clamp's gonna do that. And I just got a few business cards here to shim that up to a nice height. I'll, I'll um, center this call on this thickness and just do my first clamp in the top half first. Say like that. 
Now to make sure this is centered on this, I have to sight down right above it. Okay, now let's see if I can just stand it up. So you can imagine it's a little stressful when you're doing an actual box and there's four of these to do. What you can do is put tape on this too so you can tape them on quickly and they'll hold themselves or get a helper to help you hold these things. All right. So take a look at this gap. You're going to see it closing as I'm tightening. There you go. So you can hear the wood kind of creaking as the two sides slide. Okay, if, you, if you're hitting it with a mallet and you can't close it, the clamp will do it every time. It has a lot more power than a mallet, so. Basically, keep tightening until you can see that you're touching up here. Once you are, there's no point going any tighter because you're just going to start bending this part or you might break something.